It doesn't take much to excite me when it comes to cooking, and I'm really excited about today's video because I think I'm gonna share some truths with you that will transform the way you cook vegetables. You ever wonder why your family doesn't like your vegetables? I'm gonna tell you why. I've been asked twice recently by two pretty good cooks, in fact, one was a chef at a country club, why is it that your vegetables always look so great, they're so crispy, so flavorful, and mine look limp and or look very tired? And I thought about that for just a few minutes and I came up with 10 reasons that a lot of people don't do a good job cooking vegetables. And today we're gonna to use the good old squash because this is the one I think people mess up the most. Zucchini, yeah, they'll mess it up. Uh, some other vegetables, yes. But squash is one of those vegetables, the texture of it for some, and the flavor of it, which is not much by itself, just doesn't seem to shine in the kitchen because it's not properly done. Reason number one, then you, you kind of keep a list of these and tell me um, which ones you do. Uh, write it in the book below. You may say, I don't do any of those. I'm, I'm doing them all right. That'd be great. I, I want to hear from you. But let's go with number one. Number one is improperly cutting the vegetable. When we cut a vegetable in any kind of cooking, we want consistency in our cutting. We are cutting our pieces to be consistent size. So if you cook a big piece and a small piece, obviously they're not gonna cook at the same time and you're gonna have inconsistency in your cooking. So we, here's a good way to cut a squash or any vegetable. We're gonna tip it, cut the tip off, and then we're gonna cut the tail off. And what I do now is I take my proper grip on my knife, come over here, and I'm gonna to try to cut that as straight down the middle as I can. I'll put it over here for this camera so you can see. Take the flat side, put it down, cut it. So I'm taking one cylinder, cutting it into four quarters. So there I have four nice pieces of squash. So here's the kicker. Here's, here's, here's the hard part. That part tapers down. It's much narrower than that part. So how am I gonna get this thick part to look like that part? It's really kind of pretty easy if you think about it. The first thing we're gonna do is take that two or three inches there, put it down flat, and we're gonna cut whatever size we want. I'm gonna go with about a half inch there. And we're gonna cut half inch on that first section there. Now, when you get beyond that, you get down to the seeds. We don't want seeds. You don't want seeds in your squash. And that's another reason you may be cooking bad vegetables. You put all those seeds in there. We don't want those seeds. So I'm gonna take this, take out those seeds. I'm gonna take my knife, put it horizontally to the board, and I'm gonna come down right through here. Let's see if you can show that. I'll try to do that without cutting myself. And we're gonna go right down there and just trim those seeds out as good as we can. I did it without cutting my thumb off. That's a great accomplishment. But still hasn't solved the dilemma. We got rid of the seeds. We still have that big thick piece. We want something to look like that. So how are we gonna do that? It's really pretty simple. Put that red down flat, flattest way you can. It doesn't matter one side or the other, whichever way it rests the best, if you want it to be safe. And we're gonna put our, use our finger as a guide and we're gonna cut that right down the middle. Uh, it gave us two more pieces, and now we can take our knife and go back, and we can cut it, cut the squash in those half inch pieces. So here we go, this piece here that looked big and, and, and not very symmetrical, big narrow down here, wide up here, it all looks pretty much the same. So that gives me consistency in my cooking that is so, very, very important. All right, we've, we've looked at two reasons. We had the improper cutting and then failure to remove the seeds, two reasons. How many of those do you do? Also, the third reason, and this is really important, and we don't give it a lot of thought. Sometimes we cook vegetables, we just pull any old skillet out of the cupboard and we start cooking. And uh, do not use a knife, if you really want good vegetables, good caramelized vegetables, do not do not use a non-stick skillet. Now, what do I like to use? Cast iron is pretty darn good to use. Most of the time, I, I love my stainless steel skillets. And this is a Volrath, and I've had these for years and years and years. And I've taken very good care of them. Every time I use them, I properly wash them and clean them. 
and they're practically as clean as they were the day I took them out of the box. Very good durable, and I love cooking on the stainless steel. However, there are some tricks to cooking on the stainless steel skillet. You've got to properly prepare your skillet. You know, say, what do you mean properly prepare? So, what was some of the problems I've seen people do when they um, cook vegetables, and I see it time and time again? You need to bring it up to temperature, um, especially a stainless steel skillet. You want to bring up any skillet. You want to bring up to temperature. You don't want to just take your oil and dump in there, and you don't want to just take your vegetables and dump into a cold skillet. What you're going to have would be soggy, uh, oily, greasy vegetables. So we're going to bring this. We're going to be patient now. We don't want to hurry this thing. Go ahead and take the time. Turn this on about a medium heat. How do I know if my skillet's hot enough? This is a cool little trick, and it's and all these things I've told you so far, I think they're worth subscribing to the channel for and hitting that like button. In fact, I might even subscribe to the channel myself. But anyway, here's a cool little trick to know if your skillet's hot enough, especially uh, using a stainless steel skillet. Take you a little bit of clear, clean water and heat it up and drop it in that skillet. I'll see if we can pick it up on this camera here. If it steams like that, you see the steam just coming off of it, the skillet's not quite ready to, to go. So we're going to let that heat up another minute and we're going to look for another little signpost that the skillet's ready. We let it heat up just another couple seconds, maybe 15 or 20 seconds. We're going to drop some more water in. And see how that beads up just like a mercury ball right there? That's what we're looking for. I know, see, I love watching that. That's kind of cool. Those little mercury balls, we're going to wipe the skillet out. And then I'm going to take my oil. This is, a, this is an avocado oil I'm going to use today. I'm going to put in there, coat my pan pretty good. I'm not going to get it too oily. Swirl that around a bit. We want that oil to heat up, and how do I know when it's hot? If you've ever seen a glass of wine, and I wish I had a glass of red wine here to show you, um, you pour the wine and you swirl it around and it gets a little, some what they call legs on the wine glass. And it, these little streaky lines, that, legs that come down, you're gonna get the same thing with your oil when it gets to the point of being hot enough. And we're, we're just about there, and that's what I look for before I put my vegetables in. Because when I put these vegetables in, I want to listen for the sizzle. The vegetables need to sizzle as soon as they hit the pan. Let's try one. Very carefully, we're gonna try one. I hear the sizzle. I want a little more sizzle than that though, so I'm gonna wait just one second more. And while we're waiting for that to heat up, the next thing is that we mistake we make, and I think is number six, is improper heat control. You've got to learn to control the heat. Consistency of cutting, consistency of controlling the heat makes you a better cook. And uh, so we're gonna learn to control the heat and you're gonna have to watch it because we don't wanna burn the oil. I'm not worried about that with the avocado oil too much. It's gonna get up to 550 degrees before it begins to burn. But that could be problematic with, with uh, anything like uh, olive oil or even some vegetable oils they're going to cook at about 400 and some degrees there. But anyway, we're good here. I'm going to make certain I'm getting that my yard reaction, which I am. I don't know if you can see that here. If I see right there, that, uh, it's that getting that browning, that caramelization, that my yard reaction. So we're good to go. Now I'm going to pour these, put these in here very carefully. And here's the next point I want to bring out. Don't overcrowd your skillet. I don't want to have these things in here so, so many that they're piled high and they can't caramelize. Well, here's what happens if you put too many in there. Let's stir that around just a little to get a coating of oil on all that. So I'm going to control my heat like I talked about. Turn it down a little bit. Keep an eye on it. So you notice I have not overcrowded my skillet. What happens if you overcrowd a skillet with vegetables or meat or just about anything? It's going to all cook together and it's going to produce a lot of steam. So instead of um, stir fry or instead of sauteing your vegetables, cooking them in this nice beautiful oil, you're going to steam them and they're going to be soggy as a result. That's not going to happen with this method. So let's let them cook just a minute and see how we're doing. The next mistake we make is seasoning these things at the wrong time. 
99% of the people I've seen cooking vegetables will take that salt. As soon as they put the vegetables in there, they're going to salt it. What does salt do? Salt draws moisture out of our vegetables. And what happens again is we put the salt in early, too early, it's going to cause that moisture to come out. And again, instead of getting that beautiful Maillard reaction, that darkening, that, that caramelization of the vegetables, we're going to be steaming those vegetables and we don't want to do that. So we're going to stir these around a bit. Don't put your garlic in too early. Uh, if you put your garlic in too early, you know what's going to happen. It's going to burn, it's going to be bitter and it's not going to be very good. So we want to be very careful about that. In fact, sometimes I'll wait until the vegetables are done, something like this, and I'll turn the heat off and then throw my garlic in for just a second or two. Mistake number nine is over stirring. People have nervous habits. They like that spoon in their hand. And for some reason, they like to just stand there and stir everything. Just let the stove, the heat, and the vegetables or whatever you're cooking do what it's supposed to do and you don't need to monitor it all the time and stir it all the time. Just let it do its thing. These are about done. I'm going to go ahead and put my garlic in there. Keep an eye on that. I'm going to turn my heat off. And I tell you what, we're on the way to making some really beautiful, tasty vegetables. Go ahead and put a little bit of pepper in there. Man, they smell fabulous and they look fabulous. Point number 10, and you, you, a lot of people don't think about this, is when they're preparing a meal, they have the meats and the, the starches and all those things going on. They have a tendency to get a little nervous and cook their vegetables like this way too early. Well, what happens? When they sit out a long period of time, they just lose some of that color and some of that texture, some of that aroma, some of that flavor. So try to time cooking your vegetables to coincide with near the end of the preparation and presentation of everything else. I thank you for watching today. I really appreciate all of our viewers and the comments that you make and help and support this channel. And uh, hit the like button, please. You know the routine and subscribe if you haven't, it's free. But remember above everything else, have a passion for cooking. Not only love to cook and I love to cook, but I tell you what, I really cook to love. See you next week.